Hi everyone, uh, this is, uh, let's see, day six of my power supply build, uh, video number uh, four. And uh, today I'm just going to tell you what I've been doing and uh, everything that's going on. Now, this past two days, which is the weekend for me uh, and probably everybody else, I didn't get much done. I only worked on this for about an hour. But uh, I wanted to share what I've been doing. I've been looking for parts. Uh, I got my schematic done. And good news, I got my opto isolators working, which is going to save me a ton of effort on the other side of this. So I'm going to show you what I got, and I'm going to show you my schematic, and I'm going to tell you a few other things. So here are the parts that I've been gathering. Um, these are meters from Harvard Freight. Uh, today is the 23rd, so uh, what is it, 1-23-2011. Uh, until 2000, uh, I'm sorry, until the 27th of this month, you can get these for $3.99. Uh, they're, they're just cheap meters. It'd be good for, you know, accidentally blowing up. But this is just going to be for a reference voltage and a reference amperage. This will go up to 10 amps, so I'm good for each power supply. And uh, I probably just have one amp meter on the first power supply that I'll be using a lot. And then the voltmeter I'm going to have switching on this switch. Uh, and I can select what I what voltages and where at I want to point at. I think this has seven contacts on it, and then also there's contacts on the top. Um, so probably doing some fancy stuff if I get the opportunity. I've taken this meter apart so you can see what it looks like. It's pretty cheap, um, but you can basically put a clear, uh, or you can put an LED behind here or something and make this a glowing, uh, you know, make it glow. So like. I can see that here, this bulb is real bright. But anyway, uh, I'll be able to make it glow, put an LED behind here so it'll look all fancy. It's actually cheaper to buy a 19-function digital multimeter than it is to buy a panel voltmeter. Um, kind of stupid, but it's fine. I'm having a problem with the terminal blocks. I don't have any banana plugs, and I don't really have any money to buy banana plugs. So I just got these contacts, and I'm just going to use those for now. And I can always buy some if I ever get the money. Here are some switches with, uh, they got LEDs built into the back of them. Um, that's for the power. I got these switches for the signal switching. Um, and I'm going to hook up an LED here on the external probably. Uh, or something like that. I got some 555 timers I bought a while back. Opto isolators that I recycled from stuff. Here's my switching relays. Um, let's see if I can, whoa. I'll drop my camera. See if I can zoom in on this. See what they are. They're good for 20 amps. I know they're good for 10 amps, so that's fine. I'm good enough. Uh, what else do I got here? I got some breakers instead of fuses. I got to find a few more of these. I got them. But uh, these are only 7 amps. Um, so I might do something different. But 32 volts, 7 amp. So they might work alright. This is for the output side on the power supply. I got this light just for fun. I had it. And uh, here's my capacitors. Now, a while back I told you I was going to use these these giant capacitors right here. But the problem is I've got big capacitors here, big capacitors here, but I only got three of each. So I found these uh, all together on the same board. These are 150, I'm sorry, 1500 microfarad, 250 volts, which is, that's pretty high voltage. But I'm worried about uh, the, the farad. It's actually pretty small. But uh, I got four of those, one for each. That's just going to, that, that'll more or less even out my power supply. When the power comes out of my my uh, steer amp here, which is being powered by this uh, pulse width modulator, it's going to be choppy. And this will smooth it out. And also, if I if I blow, if you know, if I create a dead short on accident, uh, I'll be, this will take the blow and fry some wires and um, trip this breaker versus burning up one of these power supplies. Um, at least that's the goal. Uh, these actually will shut down if they get shorted out, so that might be already safe. I, I don't know. I just don't want to chance it. But basically, you just unplug this and it'll reset. Here's my circuit. Got my opto isolator here working finally. And uh, here I'm going to explain my circuit. I'm going to post this. Uh, I'm going to post this circuit for you guys, and I want you to just kind of look over it so you can get an idea of what's going on. Um, and just if you see something funny that is like not going to work, or you see something that I can prove on, let me know. Um, I don't know. I'm not the best at electronics, but I get by. So here it is. I don't even know if we can see this very well. Uh, let me just try to zoom in here. Oops. Okay. So this basically is my my five 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 timer deal. 
Um, on the input here, you just need this one potentiometer if you're building one for yourself. But I added, I added a low point. It won't go past this low point, and it won't go past this high point. Uh, that's what these two resistors are, because once the pulse width cuts off, the steer amp goes crazy, and it's not a good thing. So it's, these are my limiting, basically. And then here is a, a fine-tune adjustment to get my voltage right where exactly where I want it, because this is a really big potentiometer. Um, so this is my 555 timer circuit right here, and then off of that is being driven uh, a MOSFET, which drives an LED inside my... Uh, opto isolator and then here my opto isolator comes out runs an, excuse me runs another um, MOSFET which basically goes to my steer amp uh, here and the power supply for the 24 volts here and uh, big cap which is those capacitors I showed you and out to my output um, now I'm going to show you this schematic, uh, you can look at it for yourself, I'm not going to try to explain it all, but you can see how my positive comes out here, where if I turn on this switch here, which would be on the outside of my box, it flips this relay internally, and now these signals are now connected to this ground. So this positive is connected to this ground. And what that means is, is that now I move my power wire out to here, and I'm getting voltage across these two, instead of here, I get across these two. Now what I can do, and I tried to do this with those, I needed those opto isolators, and I got them. Um, so what I got here is this other switch, and this basically takes this first pulse width modulator circuit and, and divides it uh, so I can basically run any one of these uh, steer amps over here. So I flip this switch, and now these two are connected together, which run at all the same time. So I have 10 volts here, 10 volts here, 24 volts, or I'm sorry, 20 volts out here. It basically evens out the power coming out of my coming out of my power supply because I don't want this one running at like five volt and this one's running at you know fifteen volt to make my twenty volt. I want this one to be ten and ten so I evenly disperse the amperage. So that's the whole reason behind these opto isolators is so I can run the signals to these other steer amps. Um, what else do I want to say? I know there was something. Oh, uh, the program I'm using. Uh, if you can see this, it's free on the internet. It's called Express. Uh, well, this one is Express. Uh, hold on, let me open the other one. It's right. Oh, come on! Don't tell me I didn't save it. There it is. All right. The other one is called Express. If you Google Express PBC, I'm sorry, PCB. Uh, basically, you'll come up, you'll get this program and this drawing program. Jack, you asked me what I use. I replied to you, but this is for everybody. If you want to uh, make your own schematics, and it's it's just a free little program. It ain't nothing fancy. Um, <clears throat> it makes schematics very well. Now, what you can also do is make printed circuit boards, which is what I'll be doing. This is something I just started a little bit ago. Um, this is my pulse width modulator circuit, basically. I gotta add my optocoupler and, and the rest of it this way. But uh, whoops. But there you go. Um, so I'm actually going to etch my own circuit boards. Um, somewhere over here, I had a circuit board that I etched. Uh, this one might be hard to see, but you can see. Let me focus the camera. There you go. You can see how I uh, I etched that. Um, I will show you guys how to do this and uh, hopefully you'll get some use out of it but that's exactly what I did I took uh, I took my schematic like this one and then figured out what I needed to do and I laid it out by hand which is really time consuming and then you take uh, you take some uh, slick paper and have uh, have a uh, laser jet no yeah a laser jet printer I believe I have to correct myself later if I'm wrong but you print it out on there and then you basically print out on paper excuse me on slick paper and then you have the copper clad board you set it on there and you take a hot iron and it transfers that ink that toner it has to be a toner uh, a jet jet ink whatever it's called you guys will figure it out google it but I'll explain it to you later um, so there you go if I can focus this thing in here you go uh, day six again um, said I didn't really get to work on this last two days I'm hoping to get this finished up. The only other thing I have to do is find me some 500k potentiometers. 
and uh, also the other, I think I put 50k in there, it could be 100k, it could be 10k, but that's my fine tune adjustment, it doesn't really matter, but I'd like it to be 50k, that seemed like a pretty good spot, but I just got to use what I got, um, I googled uh, 500k potentiometers and found out that that's what they use in their guitars, uh, in guitars for their like volume controls and stuff, so I found a guitar shop, I'm going to run over there and see if they got some locally, um, for like a couple bucks, real cheap, um, because uh, I don't have much money. I, I got a couple dollars, but uh, literally like not much at all. Spent it on these meters. I think that was eight bucks. And uh, <clears throat> pretty limited. So, but I am going to show you guys how to etch circuit boards. It's going to be pretty neat. So uh, that's it. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, look over the schematic and let me know what you guys think. All right. This is Russ. See you.